Hi, this is Eddie Beeson. You're listening to Breaking the Fourth Wall. I was Mandark in Dexter's laboratory. Ha 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 ha. You are listening to Breaking the Fourth Wall on Realm of the Mist Entertainment. Hey, what's up, guys? Christopher Stolly back with another Breaking the Fourth Wall podcast. That's right. You get two for one today because we just released part one of it's called the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame for a reason. Uh, And so we decided to go for a part two because Colin decided to join Serenity and myself and wants to get his two cents in as well as to the travesty of things like Rage Against the Machine and Iron Maiden being snubbed for the nominations but also i just got done telling colin about some of the names that didn't even get consideration even though they're eligible this year so introducing colin and serenity to the show let's get back into the rock and roll hall of fame guys how you doing great (laughs) great good to hear from you yeah it's been a while like i said i've been gone for two weeks uh studio wise but it's been an episode for people that listen um, so yeah the, the the way we were hitting it and, and like i said i gave a couple uh explain uh uh additional band names that were not even given the nomination even though they're eligible this year bands like judas priest uh uh stephen wolf uh, uh blue oyster cult brian adams soundgarden uh just to name a few that didn't even get the nomination, but yet Jay Z gets into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Colin, right, he's not even a rock artist. Well, that's he isn't a rock artist. They should have their own category, their own hall for um, like rap and R and B. I mean, it's only right, I think. Well, that's it. Like, I, I can I can be apologetic. Like, I'm fine with Dave Grohl getting into the Hall of Fame, and and of course, uh, it's about time they recognize Randy Rhodes. You know, but. Uh, Overall, like I, I, I can apologize for Whitney Houston for being more soft rock than anything else. But how are you nominating? Like, why can't they have if it's such a popular and modern genre of music, which personally I don't get it, but whatever, you know, why can't they have their own Hall of Fame? Why do they have to be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? As we looked up as Serenity and I looked up earlier, country has its own Hall of Fame. So why can't rap? Right. Rap and R&B should have their own Hall of Fame. I mean, I could understand, all right, Jay-Z made some pioneering moves um, with some of the music he came out with. And I, I respect him for that. But I don't think he really belongs in the same category as other artists um, that we've seen through the Rock Hall. It, it just, to me, it's like, it doesn't make sense. I, I feel the same way about Tupac when he was inducted last year. You know, he's a great artist, made a lot of strides to help the music um, community grow and evolve. But at the same time, he's not a rock artist, so what does he do in there? You know, they should have their own separate thing. Well, again, Serenity and I in the first episode, and I, I don't I don't want to constantly rehash, especially since both parts of this are releasing in the same day. Uh, but for your ears more than the listeners' ears, we did go through uh, a, a billboard article about rappers being inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, as well as what it takes, the criteria to be inducted uh into the rock and roll hall of fame i'll start with the uh, criteria the criteria is your first album has to have released a minimum of 25 years ago and that your influence your band's musical influence or whatever has has progressed rock and roll so again by their own criteria rap doesn't belong in rock and roll but the billboard the billboard uh article the Billboard they article. And they model they have no rock artists model themselves after Tupac or Jay Z, as far as I've ever known. Well, like I said, bands like uh, uh, Rage Against the Machine, Kid Rock, uh, Three Eleven, just to name uh, name three off the top of my head, they kind of have a rap influence. So uh, maybe that's why they think it's progressed rock and roll. But I, 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 yeah, I'm with you. I don't agree that rap has ever influenced rock. Any more than right. rock has really influenced rap. 
Yeah, they're kind of like polar opposites almost. Yeah. But the uh, the Billboard music chart, to, to, to get your impression on this, the Billboard article that I read about the rappers being inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame since 2007 with Grandmaster Flash to current day with uh, with uh, Jay-Z is the reason of being is because there's, there's more diversity in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame because we're finally recognizing that rock is an attitude and not a genre. Right. Well, that's true. I, I can agree with that. I can't. Rock may be an attitude, but rock and roll is a genre of music, a very broad genre of music, but not so broad well, as to yeah, incorporate then, anything that doesn't do anything with rock. Right. Uh, well, you kind of have to look at it like uh, a little bit different, like open mindedly, because like a lot of rock artists today will sample old tunes that were back in the 70s or 80s. Like, um, what do you call it? Uh, well, just like Vanilla Ice for one, the Ice Ice Baby. That was David Bowie, under pressure. Yeah, you know? and, and they do sample things like that. Yeah, but that wasn't even sampling. That was straight up stealing. He tried to right. yeah. he tried to fight copyright <laughs> infringement for one symbol right. hit. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but I could see how they kind of go together. Sometimes they will use sampling from older songs to bring into a new rock song, and that's cool. But it doesn't mean that we want rap artists and R B artists in the Rock Hall of Fame. It's just it's kind of silly to do that. We'll see, and, and well, I just think that they need to induct some other bands first. I mean, there are rock and rock and roll type bands that have influenced multiple generations that aren't in there, and for them to recognize other genres before they even recognize their own kind of deflates the people that are trying to reach that stride in music. <coughs> True. Very true. Well, again, and 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 I'm gonna uh, get both of your opinions on this specifically. Um, I guess the argument here, regardless of personal opinion of whether rap and hip hop belong in the genre of rock and roll, is the argument that there are so many bands that are waiting for their recognition: Iron Maiden, uh, Rage Against the Machine, Gordon Fucking Lightfoot. B, uh, you know, uh, Blue Oyster Cult, uh, you know, th- th- name so many few bands that have legacies that span 50 plus years still not being inducted in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, but Jay Z gets in. Yeah, that's kind of messed up. I completely agree with like recognizing the ones who've been around for 50 plus years that are household names that we still (coughs) hear their music nowadays in movies and on TV shows. Like they deserve that decade, three, four decade long recognition before somebody who maybe that's not even their goal, you know, like they're not even part of music. They rap and they have good vocals and they know how to spit them out. Right. But they're not really, musical they're lyrical yeah they're lyrical but they're not rockers well even they don't even have music to their like no guitars no drums like right that's not the same exactly it's midi wave files created on a program like fruity loops but i mean seriously again i'm not i'm not trying to pick on the rap and hip-hop genre so much you know these people have influence in their genres the way the way they should they've they've progressed hip-hop that's great for them but it's not rock and roll is it fair for notorious big or tupac or jay-z to be in just two names that were you know in nomination or not nomination but was uh eligible this year two names that really personally pissed me off should these people be in before fucking joe walsh or phil collins in their solo careers Think about what Phil Collins and Joe Walsh have done in their solo careers. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't think that Jay-Z has a, a better opportunity. I think I think they should have put uh, Iron Maiden before Jay-Z. You know, totally. You want me to make you laugh, Colin? One of the people that was uh, nomin- or not nominated, again, eligible but not nominated. Okay. And I don't care what genre of music you listen to. We all know two of his songs. Hmm. Jimmy fucking Buffett. 
Oh, cheeseburger, it's paradise, my friend. There's three songs, because I was meaning five o'clock somewhere in Margaritaville. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 hell yeah, but he totally deserves it. Way more than Jay-Z. He's been around longer, and he's he's worked harder. He's toured harder. And that man, he's who been... nominates them? Like, is there a board of people that decide who from the eligible list gets nominated? Well, supposedly it's supposed to be through vote, at least what I hear on the radio and shit like that. Get your votes in for the nominations and the nominees to be uh, to the people to be nominated or whatever. But I mean, you know, I, I question that it's kind of conspiracy theory that, you know, Serenity standpoint. I think it's the fucking rep record companies for uh, influencing. It's like, no, no, don't put Jimmy Buffett. His albums don't sell right now. Jay-Z's do. But Jimmy right. Buffett, we're, if one of the criteria is influence of rock and 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 uh, progressing it forward, in, in you know throughout history, the goddamn man damn near has an island named after one of his fucking songs. Right. Yeah, and he deserves recognition far before Jay Z does because what has Jay Z done for rock and roll? Not a lot. He hasn't really. If I'm honest, I mean Jay Z pisses me off because he hasn't even done anything for hip hop. He's just a noisemaker. That's all he is. He hasn't really done. I would give more respect to Tupac and Biggie Smalls for for forwarding rap and, and hip-hop than I would ever give Jay-Z. Well, yeah, Jay-Z might have had a hard-knock hard, a hard knock life, but I tell you what, no more harder than uh, Jimmy Buffett, that's for sure. Look, the best shit Jay-Z ever did was with Shaggy as a backup vocalist. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that's being honest. I don't care if you if I pissed you off. That's being honest. His oh, solo cool. shit is garbage. How the hell is he being recognized? Right. Yeah, I don't think he belongs there. I mean, they should recognize him for his work with R and B and rap music. Fine, that's fair. But not in the Rock Hall of Fame. That's just a silly place to put him. I mean, what next? We induct country people? No, country won't get an. Uh, uh, Serenity and I have talked they about have this their too. Own. They, yeah, yeah, they have their own rock and roll hall of fame. So the only thing, and and I use this as an example, which Serenity laughed at. The only thing I could see being inducted country wise into the rock and roll hall of fame is if you have like a duet or a crossover uh, that gets recognized. Like for example, Kid Rock and Hank Williams Jr. If they wanted to nominate Cadillac Pussy as a as a song for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, I think that's the only way you'll really get a rock artist into the uh, rock and, or excuse me, a uh, country artist into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Oh yeah, that'd be cool. You know, you have two different artists: one's a rapper, one's a rocker, and they get together and do a really cool song. That deserves credit in the Rock Hall of Fame. Well, but that it probably also deserves credit in another genre of a hall. Um, would would be for rap and R and B. So it would be like a split type of thing. It would be in both. Well, that's you why know. I have less of an argument with band, uh, with rap artists like Public Enemy or Run DMC, because they did cross that barrier in the rock with the you know Run, Run DMC and Aerosmith doing Walk This Way or you know yeah. Bring the Noise with Public Enemy and Anthrax. That makes sense. Right. right, right, totally. Serenity, what about you? I'm I'm still just in shock about this list of who's not on there. I mean. Brian Epstein, as much as I love the Beatles, Brian Epstein isn't even a musician, and he's in the Hall of Fame. Right. <laughs> I still argue that Ringo Starr got in before Pete Best. <laughs> I just gotta throw well, at least out Ringo Starr is in there, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking bastard. I still hate him for that day. Right. I, I am happy to see that they finally honored Randy Rose, you know, after his death for so long now, but... Mm -hmm. um. Yeah. Same, same deal. I'm I'm happy with Todd Rudgren because I know how much he influenced, especially like the acid scene of of rock in the '60s and '70s, and directly influenced bands like Nine Inch Nails and and the and really the birth of the industrial scene. Right, right. Industrial rock was huge back in the '90s and around 2000. Nine Inch Nails was enormous. Still and are. Now they just came out. I don't know if I mentioned it before, but Nine Inch Nails did come out with a, another album this past year, but it's like all like elevator music. It's like <laughs> the darker side of Trent Reznor. <laughs> you know, it's something. You know, it, it's kind of off topic, but that's something as as huge of a Nine Inch Nails fan I am uh, that always annoys me is when Trent gets in those moods, he'll release an album that's great. You know, fucking like for example, like Broken. 
uh, as a right. perfect example. And it's a great album, even though it's six tracks long, eight if you count right. the two hidden tracks. Uh, right. But then he decides, I'm going to remix it and release Fixed. And now it's 15 tracks of the same song, just right. mixed differently. It's like, really, stop wasting my money and time and just release the next fucking album. Yeah, we need something new. Something yeah. new that we're all going to enjoy, you know? Like, Pretty Hate Machine is at the top of my list. I love that album from the time I heard it the first time. You know, I purchased it three times, and once it got so scratched I couldn't play it no more, and the other two times it disappeared. I had to re- buy another one. <laughs> Well, I'm right there with you. I mean, uh, for, for, for my Nine Inch Nails fandom, it's kind of funny because from Pretty Hate Machine to, to Fragile, I absolutely loved every track that he released as far as like the actual albums, not the remixes and EPs. Then I kind of fell off with, with Teeth and everything else. I kind of disappeared from them until Hesitation Marks. Hesitation right. Marks and Bad Witch are fucking phenomenal albums. You know what I mean? So I came back with those. Then he, you're telling me he released an album of elevator music. <laughs> Here we go again. But yeah, Serenity, past year. Serenity, you know, during you, the COVID. you were about to say something. Oh no, it's fine. Continue. <laughs> I, I just think that there's so many people that deserve to be recognized that aren't on the list, and the more like the years that go by and they're only adding a few in there that are actually, in my opinion, part of a hall of fame, we're going to have so many bands that just go under the carpet and never get on there. Well, see, I'm right there with you in an extent. Like if they keep going the way they're going bands, like, like again, with this list we looked at, some of these bands are band members by the time they finally get their due recognition, they won't be alive to even accept the reward. And that, to me, is right. the ultimate tragedy. You're filling space for whatever your reason with bands that may or may not deserve to even be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, but they're so newer that they should be on the waiting list, waiting to get into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and let these people who have had 50, 60 year careers have their moment in the sun before it's too late. Right, because they deserve it. They worked hard for it. You know, and again, again, I may sound like an old fuddy-duddy, oh, your music doesn't matter. It's not that I'm saying that your music doesn't matter. It's that your music is not as important as the music that's come beforehand that has not yet been recognized. Right, because a lot of these current newer artists that only been around 25 years, they were influenced by those people 50 years ago. Their parents introduced them to that music, and that's what gave them the gumption and the drive to go on and do good things for their own band. Right, and you can find a direct coalition. Like, uh, for, for an example, even though I know they're both members are in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, Ozzy Osbourne was heavily influenced by the Beatles. Without the Beatles, Ozzy would never exist. And without Ozzy, heavy metal would never exist. So Metallica and and Disturbed and, and Megadeth would never have made the Hall of Fame. Good right. thing that Black Sabbath is in the Hall of Fame. Well, that that's my point. It's like that is direct coalition of what they're talking about as far as criteria. The Beatles belong there because well, the Beatles gave Ozzy. Ozzy belongs there because Black Sabbath and Ozzy influenced pretty much all the rock and metal we listen to today. Absolutely. That's a direct coalition. That is that is influencing rock and roll. What has Jay right. Z done to influence rock and roll? Nothing. Maybe they need to make it more than twenty five years then. Mm, well, with rock and roll, I wouldn't make it more than twenty five years. Again, it goes back to they'll be dead before they get recognized. We know how rockers are. <laughs> <laughs> not very, every, very true. Not Good everybody point. is Motley Crue. <laughs> yeah, if they make it 25 years without overdosing or dying by some tragic death or something, that's great. But we can't guarantee that with rockers. You're right. You're very right. Yeah. So, I mean, just overall, it, it seems to me that it, and this is my honest opinion, what's going on here is you've got record execs and the music industry who's looking to free advertise to push their, their, their sales by putting in what's considered mainstream or popular as opposed to what should be recognized for influence and, and longevity. 
And I think that's completely abhorrent. I think I think it's just another example of things being erased because other things. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they shouldn't be uh, recognizing people like Jay-Z and omitting um, people like Rage or Iron Maiden. You know, because those people are actual rockers. You know, let's put them ahead of the rappers and the R&B artists if they're going to include them. Well, that's it. I mean, and and again, like, how could you how could you even nominate Iron Maiden and not nominate Judas Priest, who arguably both have the exact same amount of influence and respect within the music community? Right, right. Which brings us back to um, how they vote. Um, apparently, from what I read recently, it's like they they pick twelve hundred people that are either alumni who have already been inducted, or else other people who are producers and who are big um, CEOs and executives with different record companies and things. And they take 1,200 votes from them. And then there's a um, there's a regular vote. You can go on the Rock and Roll Hall of, Hall of Fame website and vote as a person. Um, and they use that for a percentage of what they vote on. Um, and that's the criteria that I know about as far as the voting part of it goes. I'm not exactly certain on all the numbers, but I'm pretty sure it's 1,200 people that they choose to vote. And again, if you're choosing record producers and 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 uh, engineers and shit like that, of course they want jobs. They want yeah. more records to produce and more uh, more albums to engineer. So they're going to choose yeah. what's popular. They're not going to choose what was influential. Right. Yeah. Like if they got somebody who's still making records 25 years after their first album, they're going to choose them to go in the in the induction ceremony. So that way they can say, "Oh, they're still popular. Maybe we can sell some more records." And they're going to blow off the other artists that aren't making albums anymore. Yeah, coming back to Jimmy Buffett and that, you know, all of his music and everything is owned by Margaritaville LLC, which owns the restaurants and all that stuff. And Jimmy Buffett is worth a lot of money, but he owns all the copyrights to his stuff. So the record companies probably wouldn't get anything for record sales going up. I think the only I think the only labels that get anything is uh, like royalties for being the uh, label it was released originally released under. So if like if I go out and buy a Jimmy Buffett album and I don't know who his record label was, but, it, you know, say let's say it was Capitol Records. I think Capitol Records will get a royalty pay because it was released under Capitol Records. But majority of it would go to Jimmy Buffett. Because he owns the rights to the music. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Well, it just it it gets me right in the gut when I think about all the artists that deserve it, and and you know like Soundgarden, Rage, Iron Maiden, Judas Priest. All these artists are good artists, you know, and they worked hard, they toured hard, and they really deserve the recognition. But like Jay Z, I'm sorry, Jay Z, you're cool and all, but you're not a rapper. Well, it goes it goes back to what uh, Serenity and I were saying beforehand, and Colin, get your opinion on this as well. That uh, there should that all genres of music, and and I'm not going to go so far as into every subgenre, as as I stated before, hard rock and heavy metal fall under rock and roll, you know, and all subsequent sub uh, subgenres would would fall under that. So that's the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, but rap, hip hop, mumble rap, all those subgenres should have a hip hop Hall of Fame. Have your own Hall of Fame. And if you want to give extra special attention to to bands of separate genres who really influence music overall, then you should have a music Hall of Fame. Then you could have somebody like Jay-Z sitting next to, as I gave as an example, which made made Serenity laugh. You could have Jay-Z sitting next to Mozart. Sure. (laughs) You know what I mean? <laughs> People who actually made a difference in the music community as a whole wind up in the music hall of fame, but at least get recognition in their own genre hall of fame. Right. And, and then what's to say they couldn't come up with a special award for certain artists that cross that boundary of genre, that mix two genres together? Why can't they have a special award just for that type of music? Because that happens. They do. They do. If they, if they, if the Country Music Award uh, Hall of Fame decided to to recognize Billy Ray Cyrus for his Old Town Road song, 
You don't think they would rec- wouldn't recognize the rapper that was a part of it too, which I can't remember off the top of my head who it was. Um, but if they wanted if they wanted to recognize, which we know they'll never recognize Billy Ray Cyrus. Um, but if they do, you know, if they do, they would recognize the artist that was with him, that was a rap artist. So he'll be in the the Country Hall of Fame for his contribution to that song. The same as, like I said, Public Enemy with Anthrax or Aerosmith with Run DMC. It makes sense because they contributed to something rock and roll. But you'll never right. see it the other way. If there was a hip hop hall of fame, do you think uh, them inducting Public Enemy would get uh, Biohazard recognized for the fucking? Uh, uh, oh my god, what was that soundtrack? Uh, Judgment Day soundtrack. Probably not. Song, you know, Slayer and and fucking Onyx. Right. You know? Yeah, they won't. Yeah. Well, that brings another thing into it where, um, like, Dave Grohl was inducted with Nirvana, and now he's being inducted again with Foo Fighters. Now, that's fine and dandy, but let's say they inducted, um, like, an artist on their own. Like, let's say they wanted to induct just Kurt Cobain just because of his influence in rock music, right? Okay. Well, that would be fine, but then the rest of the band wouldn't get any credit for that. You know, just that artist gets credit for that. Um, you know, Dave Grohl gets credit twice, but it's not for his solo work. It's for the work that he did with different bands, which is totally acceptable. Which, which is fine, yeah, because like, like, okay, Nirvana, to use your example, Nirvana getting recognized uh, as a band, everybody in the band, you know, Pat Smear, uh, Chris Novoselic, and J- Dave Grohl, they all get the recognition for Nirvana. You know, they get the credit and everything else. If they wanted yeah. to do something like they're doing with Randy Rhodes for Kurt Cobain, there's no shame in that because the band was already recognized. Now we recognize the artist that's no longer with us. That's fine. Yeah. But, you Correct. know, if you're, if you're influ- like, for example, since he was snubbed, uh, Phil Collins, if you're only recognizing Phil Collins for a solo career and forgetting about Genesis, then that's fucked up because Phil Collins was part of Genesis. They deserve the recognition too. Right. But then if they right. induct Genesis, but then, you know, if they do induct Genesis, do, do they bring, um, what's his name into it? Uh, Peter the other Ga- guy, Peter Gabriel. Yeah. Why not? Peter Gabriel. Do they give him credit too? I mean, they should, right? Sure. Why not? Metallica gave credit to fucking Jason Newstead when they went in. Right, yeah, he was no longer with the band, but he helped pioneer the music and helped write some of those albums. So, yeah, he deserves credit, too. Yeah, and they gave it to him, so why wouldn't you? Bon Jovi did it, too, with Richie Sambora. Richie wasn't part of the band anymore, but he was still inducted with Bon Jovi. Right, and that's respectable. Yeah, so, so yeah, why not? Why wouldn't you bring Peter Gabriel in on a Genesis uh, nomination? Yeah, you know, anybody who was involved with the writing of the original music. And again, it's not saying that what Phil Collins did solo wise doesn't quote unquote doesn't shadow what Genesis did because he's done a lot of great songs. Again, you may not be a fan of the genre of music, but everybody knows fucking I could feel a calling in the air tonight. You know, yeah, as an example, yeah. or Land of Confusion. <laughs> you know? yeah, even Disturbed did a cover of that one, and that was pretty <laughs> rocking too. Yeah, you know. So, I mean. Now, I'm not saying that Phil Collins' solo doesn't re- de- uh, deserve recognition. I absolutely am saying that it deserves it. But I, I agree with you. I think if you're going to get a solo artist, you have to first induct the band that they were a part of before they became a solo artist. Right, yeah. That way you're, you're taking in the whole package and you're not forgetting about somebody. That way it's like, no, the band gets credit, but guess what? The artist, the, the headline guy, the guy who's up front or whatever, he really did a lot more work and he was involved in a million things. Well, give that guy separate credit on his own because he deserves it. Serenity, what about you? Do you think do you think that's a, a fair way to go on an, an artist who was once part of a band but then went on a solo career? And regardless of how powerful the solo career was, that maybe the band should be recognized first before the individual? Um, no, I, cause some bands go further than others. And just because the talent is there doesn't mean that it came across the same way. So maybe a band that they did prior wouldn't be as big or influential as the person. And the person might've moved on to become something bigger and more influential later. 
sure, sure. Okay. Like you, you would give credit to say, um, oh, I don't know, uh, old band, like the cult, right? Let's say you give credit to the cult and, um, you get credit to, uh, what Ian Asbury or whatever. Um, but you don't go back in history to the bands they were in prior and give them any credit because they didn't release anything that was worthy. You know, and so it's more of a judgment call, I think, than anything where you have to look at did that band with that particular artist involved do anything that really influenced everybody else? Was it really that worth it? Do they deserve that credit? And that's kind of a judgment call where you need to have people look at it and vote and say, wait a minute, was it really that touching of music? Did, did, did they deserve the credit or just the artist? Well, you you bring up a point that we but we all know that Black Sabbath is in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and we know Ozzy is recognized solely. But out of curiosity, I don't know this myself, uh, just in case you guys may know it. When they inducted Black Sabbath, did they only induct Sabbath with Ozzy, or did they also recognize and induct Ronnie uh, the years of Ronnie James Dio? Right. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. Because I know there was another vocalist that was with Sabbath that did like one album and it was a flop. But the two major influencers in Black Sabbath were Ozzy and Dio. The most successful That's albums of, of Black Sabbath's career was with one of those two fronting the band. So was both vocalists recognized? Sure, right, right. Well, I yeah, think I mean... so, but <laughs> you never know. I think that their names are probably both in there. You know, yeah, it's kind of, kind of the same argument with, like, Van Halen. Like, obviously, David Lee Roth will be inducted with Van Halen, but what about Sammy Hagar? And in turn, do we ignore Gary Sharon for his one failed attempt at fronting the band? Right. Well, well, then you look at Journey, right? When they inducted Journey, I watched it with the ex-girlfriend, and we sat and watched the whole thing, and they actually did have the original artists, um, the original vocalist, and then, or Joe Perry, you know, and then they had the new guy, uh, he's like Japanese or Chinese or something, I can't remember. Um, but he's got almost the identical voice, but they had him come up on stage with him too, because he's currently part of it. Right. Even though he didn't write the music, he's there to take the place of the original vocalist because he can no longer do his vocal. Right. So, yeah, I mean... But I think they still give credit to the original. Like... Right, they did. They did, though, yeah. Okay. Well, that's what I mean. Even if it's not in the ceremony, if it's at least in the uh, in the Hall of Fame itself, do they give a list of all the members of that particular band? Like, even if Ronnie James Dio, who obviously was dead when Black Sabbath was uh, nominated, or no, you know what? I'll use Van Halen. It's more recent and 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 useful. If David Lee and Van Halen came up accepted the award during the ceremony and everything else that and but they didn't have sammy and gary sharon there that's fine but in the hall of fame with the little plaque or whatever it is for for van halen do they at least like list them as part of the lineup right yeah they should um i i i think i remember that van halen one and i i think something about i remember seeing um david lee roth was there and um, Sammy Hagar, I think, was not available to attend or something. Right. But it doesn't surprise me that much, knowing Hagar. <laughs> Too busy in Mexico with his uh, yeah, with his like tequila. Cabo yeah, yeah, Cabo I, Wabo. And for those that don't know, he he's the guy who uh, come up with Cabo Wabo. He owns that. Yeah. Um, he's got his bar down there in, in Cabo San Lucas where they make that stuff. Um, but yeah, uh, it's just like, you know, some of those things surprise you when you see the induction ceremony. Um, when Pearl Jam got inducted, everybody was shocked that Neil Young wasn't there because he was a major influence in their career. Right. Um, and that blew my mind that he wasn't there. You yeah. Know? Uh, because when they inducted him, uh, Pearl Jam was there to help induct Neil Young. Well, that's exactly it. If nothing, if 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 Neil Young served no other purpose, he should have been the presenter for Pearl Jam. Right, right. So I'm not sure if scheduling was a conflict there or what, but for some reason he wasn't able to make it. And that made me kind of sad because he deserved to be there to help be there to accept that reward or uh, to bring that award to Pro Bowl. You know, so it, it, let me ask you, do you think that Pete Best should be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Yeah. Sure. Without Pete Best, there never would have been a Beatles. I don't care that he got replaced with Ringo Starr during their popularity or their breakthrough. He was still one of the original members. He still influenced that band to become what it became. 
Right. By doing the ants go marching and other silly songs. I mean, I don't know. See, this is something I'm going to have to think about because that the Pete Best question makes it very questionable about who should be inducted. Well, you you have to look past some of the silly songs that people do because sometimes people will do jingles for um, like Burger King or McDonald's or some crap, right? And they could be a really awesome artist, but somebody sold them on the idea, yeah, do this, you'll get paid for it, you know? So they'll do a bunch of commercial crap, um, some jingles or something, right? Um, you, so you can't really rate them on that because that's kind of like commercialized stuff. It's just like out there. Well, you know, he, just, I think I think it also falls under the, the categories of like, look at like Pink Floyd, for example. Should Pink Floyd have been inducted only with uh, Sid and not uh, Dave Gilmore? Uh, no, no. Gilmore influenced a lot. He, you know, but he yeah. was he wasn't an original member, and as much as he influenced afterwards, especially after uh, Roger Waters' departure from the band, uh, you know, Pink Floyd became Pink Floyd because of Sid. So, right. should Sid be excluded, or should he be included and exclude Dave Gilmore? I think you'd have to include them both because they both had different influences at different times. That's that's my same that's my same mindset. Like even if it's silly shit, I think Pete Best should still at least get some recognition for his part in the Beatles. Right, right, and, and you're not nominating or pushing for him to get um, inducted because of the silly stuff that he made up, but because of the serious stuff that was involved with the others that that deserve the recognition for those songs, not for the silly. Right. Well, Pete Best was part of the band when it was still, like, the early days, like the Quarrymen. I don't know. I think he was part of the Quarrymen. But either way, he it was more like a local act at that point. So okay, that's, well, that's, uh, this one's a tough question. Okay, that one, that one just on that aspect, okay, I could, see, I could see where the quandary is. If he wasn't part of the mainstream Beatles, if he didn't, if he didn't release... Uh, and play on the first out al- Beatles album with the rest of the Beatles, then maybe not unless he's got writing credits on the songs of the first album. But here's what you were saying about the record label deal. I they did not get the big record label deal until they had Ringo Starr. So, but in the first they album, Pete Best, they... but in the first album. Were any of the songs ha- did any of the songs have a Pete Best credit on it for writing? Right, you no. would have to give him credit for the writing influence and for the help that he put in there, you know. But maybe you know, not like a full member, maybe an honorable mention by the guys when they accept the award. You Some, know, somebody on the help. plaque, if not on the stage. Yeah. Like, and also credit to this artist for helping with the creation of the first album right well they put brian epstein in there and he helped get the beatles to where they were gonna go so i mean it seems like they'll put in other people that did help them but i just i think that it really there's a line of what did help the band and what didn't well if if pete best it was no better than like a studio drummer who showed up and played the parts that that Paul and and uh, and uh, John and George wrote, you know, uh, up until up until they replaced him with Ringo. So he had no writing credits. He just you know he was he was there to play what they told him to play. Then no, he doesn't deserve recognition for the first album. However, if he has writing credits on at least one of those songs that was released on any of the Beatles albums and he does deserve that recognition. Right. And that's where we have to look at um, who they ask to vote on these things and coordinate it because certain people that are in the industry know these facts and know who was involved and who was more influential. <laughs> and some of them will actually will talk to the artist and ask him, Hey, was this person really that influential with your writing process at that time or not? You know, I mean, so it really boils down to who do they choose? to talk to to do the voting on it exactly 
But that's something we can debate more on another time. We are running out of time here, guys. Thank you very much for hanging out with us. I hope you enjoyed this two-parter. What do you guys think uh, on everything that we discussed so far as far as uh, who should or should not get recognition? Uh, is it right that these modern acts are getting recognition before uh, legendary acts uh, that have been waiting in the wind for so much time? And again, who would you vote for to go into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? If you had the choice today, what bands would you what band names would you put up there? Let us know in the comments section down below. And of course, join us for the Breaking the Fourth Wall weekly show, which does happen every Sunday, uh, where we'll discuss more silly shit because that's what we do and uh of course some positive advice from colin and listening about uh how stuffed uh serenity's mailbox always gets from the front but not the back <laughs> i'm never gonna let that go you're horrible i am a horrible person but that's okay because nobody knows me anyway all right <laughs>